Welcome to a presentation on the theory of multimedia learning. Uh, the quotes in my presentation today are from Reiser and Dempsey's Trends and Issues in Instructional Design and Technology. Um, as a medium, I chose Poplet to organize my information, and I'm using Screencast-O-Matic to um, record the presentation itself. To begin with, uh, Richard Mayer is the originator of um, the theory of multimedia learning. Essentially, to summarize, it's that learners, uh, the, the basic idea is that learners try to coordinate understanding of the world from multiple sources, such as images and text. Uh, let's, let's hear what, the, um, what Mayer himself has to say about media. Well, you know, I think in general, graphics um, are kind of an understudied part of the instructional scene, and um, I don't think we understand as well about how to design good graphics, including video, as we do for how to just design verbal presentations. A lot more thought has gone into, you know, how you lecture or how you write a textbook than has gone into how you design a good instructional graphics animation and video, let's say. Um, but I, if, if you look at a typical instructional episode, a lot of the time um, is devoted to graphics, including video. So um, I think it has a very um, important place in, in uh, K-12 and in college instruction and in you know, adult training in general. So it, I think uh, it has a, video has a very important place. Um, and what we need to understand is, you know, how to how to use it in the, in the most effective way. So uh, my my approach is to try to take an evidence based approach. Look at what we know about how the human mind works. Look at what the research has to say about how people process information, and use that to design, you know, effective learning experiences, including video. So what does Mayer say about how the human mind works? Well, the it, there, it uses dual channels for information processing. One is auditory and the other is visual. So what does this dual model look like? Let's take a look at this short video about mul the multimedia uh, media learning theory. We're here today speaking about multimedia learning theory developed by Richard Mayer. Essentially, Mr. Mayer believes that multimedia works best when it addresses both the visual and verbal processing systems, but he is concerned that written and spoken words can overwhelm the visual cognitive process. Once things are processed by sensory memory, words and images are selected and proceed to working memory. Here, the words and images are later organized into verbal and pictorial models and then integrated with prior knowledge from long-term memory to form lasting learning. That's a brief summary of multimedia learning theory. Thank you for watching. So with all those different boxes, it might seem that things are a bit disconnected in there or that the audio or and visual components of multimedia learning are separate. but. Um, Part of what Mayer says is that the process is more dynamic. Uh, so what processes do students actually use to, uh, to, uh, to process the information? Well, uh, they use filtering, selecting, organizing the information, and then integrating that in, uh, information into prior knowledge. Uh, or into future tasks. So how much of this filtering, selecting, organizing can we actually take? Uh, to, to take a look at this, I created a short video um, and try to play, pay as close attention as you can. Okay, obviously you can see in this that it's very difficult to process um, 
more than one form of information. There was audio going um, in two different places. Uh, one was a podcast that I had done in a previous class, um, and the other was a clip from Back to the Future with lots of cuckoo clocks going um, and a loud phone conversation. There was some clip art there, a picture of a family driving in a car in a desert, um, and honestly, I can't even remember the other piece of clip art that was there. Oh, and then in the background, there was a map of um, German uh, Germans' uh, uh, takeover of the Sudetenland um, right before World War II. So you can tell that it's probably very difficult to process all that information in such a short amount of time or when there's just so much happening on the screen. So... Um, one of the things that we can, another summary we can uh, have here is that narration, rather than on-screen text, should be used with animation or diagram so that learner attention is not split between two sources of visual input. So sometimes when we have text and uh, video or text and an audio or text and images, um, the, uh, the, the student's attention is um, split between two sources of, the in, of input. So what does this mean uh, for teaching? Well, one is that, uh, about reducing the cognitive load of materials. How much can a student actually think about at one time? And we should be careful to and, and make sure that we're uh, y using enough media and in the right dosage that students can s select the information that's important, filter it, um, organize it and then integrate it into what they're learning or what they already know. The other thing is um, the authenticity of the media and motivation. Um, it's not enough just to throw media or video or um, audio um, at, um, at students and expect them to learn just because there's uh, audio or video present. Um, incorporating stimuli in ways that support learning versus distracting from it. So there is ways that you can use video to, that's more of a distraction. Let's hear what Mayer has to say ab about this, uh, about motivation. I mean, you know, yeah, there are two ways people go about that. Um, it's really how do you make instruction more interesting. And, and research on interest also goes back a long ways. I mean, Dewey has a book, you know, in the early 1900s on, on interest in education. And, I, and I, th I think his point is relevant to video because he really points out that you can add a lot of bells and whistles to instruction. So you could do this to video. You could make it be very glitzy and, um, you know, high production quality and very entertaining um, and a lot of fun. But, but that can all really distract from the learning aspect of a lesson. So, if you, I mean, his point, and I think it's still relevant, if you have to add interest to a lesson, that means interest is really lacking in the first place from the lesson. Inter okay, I would like to just stop it there, but uh, notice what he said in the last part, um, and this is what struck me, is that if you have to add um, media just to make something interesting, um, then it's probably poorly designed. So um, this has been a presentation on theory of multimedia learning and just how a teacher might kind of incorporate some of these ideas uh, into the